You are listening to Get Real Podcast. So Dan, we have been doing this now for a year. One year of the Get Real Podcast. Flew by. Flew by fast. So we figured for our one year anniversary edition, we're going to go big or go home. And to go big, we've got with us online, Richard Morrill. He was the lead singer for LAPD, which evolved into the band currently known as Korn. He was there from 1989 to 1992. And boy, I'll tell you what, if you go back and listen to their music, they had chops, dude. Yeah. It, it's, it's good stuff. Richard, can you share with our audience a little bit how LAPD got started? You know, guys, we actually started playing together in 1985 in a band we called Ragtime, and uh, you can probably find some stuff on YouTube, but, uh, you know, our idols were Motley Crue and, and Ozzy, all the classic metal bands, and uh, we practiced three days, six days a week, but never two, you know, we, we grew up together, we took a break from each other for a little bit, and that's when we started the band LAPD. And it was um, playing, and actually me and uh, Reggie uh, Arvizu, he goes by Fildy, and uh, it was him and I that that said, you know, we want to do something more like Faith No More, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Metallica. And breaking out of the um, hair metal that you guys probably know all about. Yes. Looking at yourselves looking at how beautiful you guys are. <laughs> Thank you, I've, I'm impressed. <laughs> and you know, one thing I have to say to you guys though, is I thought I was the only one that had a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's talking all about you. Yeah, bro. no, no, I'm way over here. I'm, he can see my hand, that's about it. <laughs> but I, no, yeah, so we uh, we did that. We, we wrote the, the song, uh, Jesus, which was one of the singles on our first album, but it was one of the first songs that we wrote, and it was, uh, you know, just a dark place for all of us. And But once we graduated high school, we moved to Los Angeles. I moved to Los Angeles, actually. And we all lived with my mom, but it took me six months to convince Fieldy and Monkey and to move to Los Angeles, like, oh, we can't move. Oh, we don't know. Oh, we're scared. I'm like, dude, this is our career. We have to, we have to get to LA. I'm in LA. You can live with me. And uh, my mom became the proud owner of David Silvera. He was the drummer for the original band Corn and Ragtime and a couple other bands, but. David Silvera was only 15, and so my mom had to take um, custody of him, you know, like a written consent to be his mom. And uh, so he moved in uh, with us in L.A. at 15, quit high school, uh, God bless his parents. And uh, within six months after living in Los Angeles and having the time of our life, creating debauchery and mayhem would be the best term for it. We got signed and uh, we got this really great record record deal that we've always wanted. And uh, with just, just a few months after moving uh, to Los Angeles, you know, I, we had something special. It was a great time of my life. It was fun. Can I interject something? How long, like when y'all had started writing and putting together music and you're, you're playing, did you know, like you looked at one another after you've played a couple of things you've written and you're like, we got something here. Did you know that? Like, cause it was listening to it. I loved it. That was back in our years. Like we graduated high school, college was starting right at that time. And um, I, listening to it, I was like, that was such a fresh mix of genres. It was all this stuff, all the energy, the the angst that was going on. Did y'all know musically that w- w- we're sitting on a live something here? You know, it's when you grow up with a person, like your best friend, your brother, writing all, we, I mean, we, we lived, ate, 
and breathe music. Um, we knew what we had. It, it was, there was nothing, you know, it, it's really hard to create magic. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you, the Brian Head Welch was a phenomenal writer. He played in band, uh, band right time also. And uh, him and Fieldy were, they just have this like a natural, childlike, innocent approach to music. Feels good, looks good, it is good. And uh, he, you know, just having somebody like that, look at the stardom they have, and I felt that same magic, and uh, you you just know. And sometimes you want to, we thought we knew when we were younger, too, that we are amazing. <laughs> Best band you've ever seen. Oh, my God. Call, call president. We're going to be big. <laughs> so we we just know, man. You just know. Like even with you, look at you two, man, hanging out. You're like, do you guys look in each other's eyes and go, this is magic. Actually, we do. You guys are doing it right now. Yeah. yeah. And, but there's sometimes we're like, what in the world are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're like, we just stunk the joint out. But then other times you do get it. And, and I – my family is really musical. We like to write things and, and sometimes you write it and you're like, I actually kind of don't hate that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Feels good. No, that's awesome. You could be proud of your own work. And, uh, we could tell by the reaction of the crowd that we had something magical too, because when they, they, when they watched us in the early, early years of LAPD, people didn't know what they were seeing. They had never seen the energy, the level of enthusiasm that, you know, it, their mind, kind of their minds were blown and we could see that on their face. Oh yeah, it tore through that glam plastic tarp, you know, it, with a chainsaw, it, it was it, awesome. It, it was the yeah. total opposite of the stream of what was going on in culture at that time. Richard, what, what is it that draws you and drew everybody else in the group to heavier music? Oh man, that's, that was our, that's our life's, that's our mother's milk. You know, that's, that's what kept us going. You know, from, you know, growing up in Bakersfield, it's a very musical place to live, you know, and we, we went to every concert, but we grew up listening to Dio and Ozzy and, you know, which was kicking against the pricks of our parents because I know for a fact my parents were very country. Reggie's or Fieldy's mom and dad country. Head's mom and dad country. Interesting. Monkey and David Silvera, everybody, all of them listened to country. So for us to do rock like that, we had, you know, we had a good reason to turn heavy because, you know, some of the greatest artists for us. You know, started it all. Black Sabbath, mm-hmm. Red Zeppelin, Aerosmith. You know, it was it's a, it was a magical time for hard rock. And a lot of people think that rock is dead or that heavy is. It's not dead. We just don't have any like uh, up and coming guys that know how to sing without. <laughs> 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 I agree. Glenn and I, we talk Rocky, about it. Rocky's not dead, man. We just we forgot how to get a melody. Get yeah. A flow, get a hook. You know? Yeah. The... Oh, bro, that's selling out. <laughs> well, that five finger death punch would say, it's not selling out. We're sailing in. So. That's a great point. It's like reading a, a novel with an exclamation point after every sentence mutes it. So if you're like, whoa, you know, it's like, clean up your room, whoa. You know, it just, no. no the energy yeah. is the way I would describe y'all. Yeah. I mean, that was some energy. So Definitely. awesome. Definitely. Um, we had a, I had a friend that we, we, I, we were jamming, and he's like, hey, man, let's, I want to hear your greatest you know, wolf cry. 
I'm like, wolf cry. (laughs) 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 You're growling. I'm like, man, that's for people that don't know how to sing. It's a, you can use it once, you can use it twice, but if you use it every song, man, you're not going to have a voice. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Wolf cry. But anyway, yeah. So heavy. I, I And for now, even now, I listen to heavy metal, rock and roll, new metal, whatever you guys want to call it. So you know what might happen, though? A bunch of guys may have kids that turn out to be great country artists. <laughs> it's going to flip on you. What are some of the... Generation. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, but, you know, Bakersfield was known for country. You know, we had Hee Haw, and Buck Owens, Merle Haggard. Oh, yeah. Um, Dwight Yoakam, he didn't... He wasn't raised there, but, you know, he claims it as, as his mothership. You know, because he moved there when he was 19. And uh, in bands like Corn and another other bands, Orgy, Adema, Video Drone, Cradle of Thorns, LAPD, man, Bakersfield's known for music. So it's the Nashville of, of California. Cool for music. That's cool. It's also it's also like the White Compton also. <laughs> yeah. Straight out of Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the 90s, when the 90s were kicking off, that's, you know, Compton, the sound that was coming out of there, the grunge sound and the, gr- and the sound that was coming out from LAPD. Yeah. That was really making a rise at that at that time. What are some of the bands that you like to listen rock metal bands you like to listen to now, Richard? You know, I love Five Finger Death Punch. And I, I really wish my homie Fieldy and Ivan Moody would get together and just write a couple songs and let me play tambourine you know that's all I'm <laughs> if that happens can oh. you call me I'll play triangle in the a little cowbell <laughs> yeah. I, I think after this guys I think we're going to have to start our own band I'm kind of into this right now okay so what do you, you guys play I do I, I play guitar and mostly write some stuff so yeah Dan Dan's a gifted lyricist and, and guitarist uh I, I can do I can do some keyboards I can do some boards. Yeah, sounds like you can play with yourself maybe. <laughs> uh, play with two ball sax. <laughs> but yeah, you know, so love love the five finger, and you know the the last Lincoln Park album before the one few months before Chester Bennington died, had some of the greatest songs. And, you know, that's a band that started off metal, but was really experimental. So I have to give, you know, like give them props for that last, that last album. It was, it was pretty incredible. And, uh, you know, so, you know, I, I stream music now. So I, I listen to I don't even know who's playing because they will come on. I'm like, hey man, I got I look I'll look for my phone. I can't find it, so I just whatever. And uh, but I, I still listen to metal and I like I like rap too. I'm not gonna lie, you know, I like the apple bottom jeans and the boots with the fur. <laughs> <laughs> you do that really well. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding no I like rap one of my best fondest memories of when I was playing in LAPD was we, we recorded in uh, we, we recorded our second album and our first album in Redondo Beach uh, within about six months of each other maybe a year and the record label was like Man, this is the hippest place to be, and you guys are gonna just have the time of your life. So we we had a we had a family car, and you know none of us had any money, but I had this six passenger Lincoln Continental 1972 with a PA system inside where you could talk <laughs> like a CB. Yeah. 
And the, and the record company bought us 12 cans of spray paint, and we spray painted our car LAPD. And all and you, you could Google it. There's pictures of it. It's in, it's been in I forgot. It's in the beginning of a LA Story movie with Steve Martin. It's like, but we would get pulled over all the time, <laughs> and uh, we pull up to you know and. Who has a car that says LAPD <laughs> in, in Redondo Beach, which is in Los Angeles? So we were we were recording, and all I remember, man, there was a man, there was a lot of black people that recorded here at the studio, and uh, all of us were like, "Yeah, man, they're cool as fuck." Yeah, we fucking burned a fatty, and uh, man, they're, they're cool, man. We're gonna go to a party later, and it did. We did. It didn't dawn on us till twenty years later that the people we were hanging with was NWA wow. and the straight out of and the, the F the police song and they, and that, that details in the movie that they were at the recording studio and then got pulled over. And that's how that song, I don't know if you've seen the movie, but straight out of Compton, but that's who was hanging out. It was Dr. Dre and ice cube. We didn't know we were part of this magical time and in a sense and people were still buying cds people were still buying you know cassettes so you were making money it was just a good time man between the spray painted car and finding out later that we were hanging out with nwa and uh it was cool it was a big cultural shift you know it went yeah, from, I mean, yeah. from glam to to just warts and all with the music of lapd Richard, was there something culturally and societally that you wanted to get across to make society, make the world a better place? You know, for us, we didn't care. We just wanted to have fun. You know, like culturally, we were we were too young, man. We were, I was 17 when I moved to L.A., you know, and when we were doing that stuff, all we cared about was having a good time. We would we would pull up to a, you know, like we didn't care, we had, we had jobs that, you know, we lied to people telling them, win a free trip to Hawaii if you just put your name, right here. Hey, yeah, to Hawaii. I and talked to that guy yesterday. So for us, we we're just surviving. We pull up, we go to the gas station and go, hey, hey man, our, where, you got any money? We would bum money, so we could you know, go to the liquor store and get a 40 and go to band practice and, uh, get, and get some gas too. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we, I think for us, we were more leech. Like we're just, we're just immature, man, you know, sponging. And, uh, but you know, a lot of people talk about grit, you know, like what, how do you get grit? How, what do you, what do you do to earn it? And, Begging for money well, it will give you some grit, I'll tell you that, you know. And uh, so, yeah, we were just young and fun. You know, we did, we never, you know, robbed anybody or, or did anything stupid. I don't know, man. That, that's a good question. It's, it's going to take me four days to answer it. <laughs> Well, without question, with you guys just having fun, the impact that what you were doing had on music and the impact that it's had today. Again, as we said, what was going on musically at that time, it was totally against the grain. I mean, it was a mixture of everything, thrash, fusion, metal. It was just all mixed into one. And it was so, I'd, I'd encourage our listeners to go and listen to some of the songs that you guys did on, on the, that are on YouTube right now. Because they're awesome. You don't? <laughs> no. No way, man. It's, they, nobody had a video camera back then. So the one that they did have, we all we all tried to hog it. You know? So you, you're going to see a bunch of craziness. The energy but definitely comes through. Download the CD, maybe. Yeah, so, where, where can they get the CD? Uh, well, I, I don't know, man. Wait, Walmart... Uh, Sam Goody, um, Tower Records, oh, well, Virgin, 
I mean, just kidding. None of those are in business anymore. <laughs> Walmart is. Yeah, Walmart's still in business. I think. Yeah, right no. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't get the CD anymore. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, get a lawyer and figure it all out because I, I don't care. Gotcha. With the Internet, you know, you could probably download it. Probably have it on SoundCloud or something, you know, for free. And uh, it's, it feels like it's open source now. Feels like, even though that's not real. But I think the question you asked me was, who like who are our influences? Did you ask me that? Yeah. Um, I think it's you guys. <laughs> right now. We made the big time. We Dan. are an inspiration. <laughs> awkward. I got a question. Awkward in there. I got a question about. Um, would it, or do you currently write a lot of music? Oh my gosh, I, I wrote wrote a song today. Cool. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice one. It's got a good beat. Well, it's easy I was to gonna, to. I was gonna ask you when you're writing something, and then you, you kind of. Uh, People talk about like kind of it's almost like you're discovering something that was already there, and instead of just going like "Look what I made." Have you ever you've gotten tripped out by something that you've written, but you felt like it was kind of like I don't know, like a fax or something? Yeah, I, I think I just I, I think I just wrote and directed that song just now. That was moving, and uh, that was very inspiring. <laughs> but Matt. I write, I, I probably write literally one song in the last 10 years. Ooh, it's been great, man. It's, it's, it's a masterpiece, man. I did one note every third Thursday in the week, sometimes the second Tuesday of every week. <laughs> but no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't record much anymore. I could barely talk, man. I don't know if you can hear it. My voice got like a husky. I, uh, I had like a, vocal cord surgery like nodules and it didn't heal right so i'm just kind of whiskey now so I, I don't get to get to sing um i'd like to but no man it's 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 too hard man i, I gave i gave up that years ago i kept my day job i guess you could say and my my wife told me like after our second child was born hey uh you're gonna have to quit your band I go, ah, oh, I do. She's like, yes, you're going to have to quit your band. And I quit the band. And that was a band we called E-Sex. If you want to hear anything new that that we've done in the last, in the last, I mean, since LAPD, E-Sex was probably my bigger effort. And uh, we could have got a record deal with Roadrunner Records, but not enough money offered to us at the time. And that, I, I quit doing that in 2001. So and recently, um, I, I did throw, do an LAPD 2.0, which is uh, I wanted a 40th birthday present. And you know what I wanted for my 40th birthday present? What's that? Yes. I wanted a rock band. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife, uh, I, I need a rock band for my 40th birthday. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and this is the same woman that was with me in LAPD. So, you know, that's, you know, they called her Yoko Ono for the first, <laughs> you know. She broke up the band. But it was my fault. You know, I, it's not my fault. It's my doing, man. Um, so I, I wanted a rock band. So I... Went on Craigslist and you know put an ad out and auditioned people and and came up with uh, LAPD 2.0 and uh, why I call it LAPD 2.0 because I couldn't think of a better name <laughs> <laughs> you know like so you know picking a name is a fun part but. You know, for your 40th birthday, I had to think, if I was to have a real birthday present and anything I want, 
it would be the original LAPD hmm. for my birthday, but that wasn't going to happen. And I'm not one to ask, you know, to jam or with them. I just did myself. You know, I live in Colorado. They live in Los Angeles and Bakersfield. So I did 2.0. And we, we did like 10 songs. And that you can find that on YouTube as well. And that's LAPD 2.0. And that, it's, there, actually, we wrote some amazing song. And uh, it was, uh, it was a, that was a good time. But so I gave myself six to eight months to play in a band again. And because, uh, you know, when you're celebrating your 40th birthday, it's all year long. So, <laughs> Got to make that one count. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So six, eight months later, I go, all right, guys, got to quit. What? Dude. Bro, we can't quit, man. We're going to be huge. Dude, oh, man. Dude, we had like 40 people at our first show, man. <laughs> We're going to be huge. And I'm like, no. I'm, I, this is my birthday present, man. Sorry, guys. Like, fuck, used us. I mean, yes, I did. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. It was, it was really fun. It was really fun. But... You know, I've definitely matured away from um, hanging out with 30-year-olds trying to make music because these guys were younger, you know, because no person in their right mind that wasn't already famous, you know, so basically doesn't, for somebody like me that had to pay, you know, to rent a studio and, and uh, nobody in their right mind would do it if they had three kids. You know, trying to be, you have to give, you have to give up yourself, you know, to raise others. You, you give yourself up mm -hmm. to raise others, I guess would be a better way to say it. That's so, true. That's really true. Yeah. But speaking of stupid names, isn't, isn't corn a stupid name? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, where'd that come from? Yeah. So, you know, they, we had, we had a, there was a barbecue. And we had corn on the cob. And Fieldy ate like four of them. He loves corn on the cob. Butter, salt and pepper. And when he woke up in the morning, you know, he said, dude, come here. Look, look what I made. And in the toilet was a, <laughs> a brown corn on the cob. <laughs> And he's like, I, and that's where the name Corn came from. <laughs> I felt better not knowing that. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank For real, you. Uh, oh, that's... You, know what's, you know what's sad, though? That's that's a real story. <laughs> I didn't doubt that. <laughs> and now you know. Right here on the Get Real podcast, that is about as real as you can get. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> but, no, that's good stuff. Uh, they, they, yeah, those guys are classic. One, um, and this is a story that's, I think only you'll get to hear it, unless you guys tell somebody. Isn't this a uh, private podcast? <laughs> Absolutely yeah, confidential. Yeah, totally, totally. Just, just, <laughs> totally. just us here. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's monkey. We we were all living in Huntington Beach. And we were doing LAPD. We were, you know, we were doing good. And Monkey wanted a new guitar. He wanted to get a seven string, you know. And that's what Corn, you know, for the guitar, that's something that Joe Satriani made. But, you know, Monkey made it popular. And so there was a moth and flying around and we were all hanging out drinking a few beers with probably about 20 people and my buddy Carlos uh, God rest his soul uh, said hey James I will give you $150 that's exactly how much you needed for the guitar 
I'll give you $150 if you eat that moth. And so Carlos caught the moth, and the, it was big moth too. It was like, <laughs> if they know, I don't, I don't know what kind of moths you guys have in where you're at, but in Los Angeles, we had some like, you know, because they can grow year round. It doesn't get that cold. Okay. So it was like probably a thir- three year old moth, <laughs> and uh, and he. He, he picks it up and kind of looks around. This thing is squirming. You can see its legs. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and he puts it in his mouth and he grinds it up with his teeth, front teeth, like a like it was a little carrot. <laughs> oh. Swallows it. Takes a takes a sip of a Keystone Light. Downs it. And everybody's like, oh, my God. <laughs> and, and Carlos, man, Carlos uh, gave, him, gave him 150 bucks. And <laughs> oh, man. So he, that's why he plays it so hard, man. He did a lot to earn it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a moth and Keystone. Line. Yeah, I don't know which, which <laughs> is worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So what kind of advice would you give to our listeners who are aspiring musicians, artists that want to break in to the music business and, and follow the trail that LAPD and Korn has, has, has blazed? What kind of, what's your best advice that you would give them? Uh, don't talk about it. Do it. You, you know, don't practice two days a week. You have to practice six, seven days a week when you're looking for success there is no other way and I'm maybe three to four hour practices um, young girls when they learn uh, ballet they for ballet school they, they dance seven days a week just to learn the nutcracker you know what I mean and yeah. so so many examples of you know that working hard and paying off thing, you know, the old school way. Oh, we got to work for it. All right, here we go. So, yeah, you you got to work, buddy. And, and and it doesn't matter where you live now. You can become a popular band and get noticed. But if you're no good, you're no good. And uh, so. That's why practicing, even if you're not good, playing every day will make you good. And so, you know, what do you, what do you guys think? It's as easy as eating a moth is what I heard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good no, stuff. That, that, that is true. That is true. It takes work. You got to roll up your sleeves and do the work. Even, even what we do with this podcast, we thoroughly enjoy what we do, but we roll up our sleeves and we work. I mean, there's a lot of aspects to this that it's not just talking to really cool people and doing cool well, stuff, but there's a lot of grunt work that's involved with it as well. Hey, let me know when you get some cool people on here. <laughs> <laughs> I will shoot you a message. <laughs> All right. I, will listen to I will listen to it then. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked at your website. I, I only saw nine cool people. <laughs> Um, comments we may have touched on some. Um, comments as far as uh, we may have touched on a little bit of this, but as far as where the music, um, where's music at right now? Like I can find really good artists that I like and I enjoy listening to. I kind of have to dig for them in different places. What, what do you see? What's the landscape like in your eyes? Man, I, 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 I I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube looking for young, talented bands, up and comers. I like some of the obscure too, the Dini Bargar, you know, the Icelandic, um, you know, ghoul face mm-hmm. band. Um, but finding new music, man, like, I, you got to go on to the, got to go on to the internet, man. Like, it's the cheapest and you know it's the it's just how they do it you know 
they get people listening to it. And uh, shoot, I used to be able to just walk outside. When you're playing, you know, playing a band, you're in your studio all the time. There's a lot of other people there too, and uh, and that's all. When it's all you talk about, it's hard to man. When you get older, trying to find stuff. I don't even know if I. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I forgot. I I got a Pez for Father's Day, and um, I didn't know I had them until I sit down right now. So I kind of got ADD. Well, we, what, what, I think you asked me, what is air? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is air? <laughs> Where does it come from? You know, scientists can explain everything, but they can't explain air. What is it? <laughs> That's what I heard once I... <laughs> Once I put that Pez in my mouth, I'm like, oh, man, air. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, guys. Back to the back to the show. <laughs> our, and our sponsor, Coca-Cola. <laughs> and one Pez. And one Pez. <laughs> But yeah, man, wait, you know, what, what, where do you guys live, man? What city are you in? We're in South Carolina, uh, right in the Charleston area. Uh, we were in the Charleston area, Somerville, Goose Creek. Uh, so we're, we're here in sunny old South Carolina. Humid, man. sticky. And we do have big moths here, too, because it doesn't get cold very often here. Yeah, I was, I was, in, I remember being in South Carolina in this, this, this guy, at the uh, convenience store, he was like, "Hey, I'll, I'll I'll buy you a coke if uh, if I could rub your back." I'm like, "Rub my back? <laughs> what are you talking about? I won't rub my back." <laughs> and uh, so, I mean, weird people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we apologize. You know, there's some weird people in South Carolina. <laughs> Oh, dude. Uh, and for you listeners out there, I held up a Coca Cola. <laughs> and he held up the Pez, too. That I got in South Carolina. <laughs> well, I, yeah, you're right. I, I let him rub my back. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. No, Whatever. that's good stuff. Think, you're you, hilarious, you man. You guys definitely make people feel it at home. <laughs> yeah, you, you're hilarious. <laughs> I bet y'all did have crazy times, man. Yeah. Get a bunch of young, high energy dudes hanging out, drinking horrible beer, and uh, eat moths. Fun times, definitely. You have anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners, Richard? Yes. That moment of silence. <laughs> Very profound, very profound. Yeah, eight seconds. That was eight seconds of silence, and you're welcome. <laughs> no, man, I, I gave you enough air, and I don't want to take up any more of your air space. Because, that, you know, at this point, usually is when I, if I haven't sounded stupid yet, I will in five more minutes if you let me keep talking. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for yeah, joining man. us, Richard. This has been a been a blast. It was a, fun. It, it's a privilege, and we're really honored. To... I'm a little traumatized by a couple of the stories, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Richard, thank you, man. Thank That's you so much. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Peace out. All Peace right, out, dude. brother. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Lithoscry.com.